Hello, well, should we colonize Mars? <laughs> okay, uh, what does this mean? Well, it's something like establishing permanent habitats that have the uh, uh, potential for self-expansion and, and self-sustenance. Now, this sounds like a crazy idea, but for many people it isn't. Uh, the exploratory activity now is huge. Right now, Mars is host to 14 functioning spacecraft, eight in orbit and six on the surface. Did you know that? Mostly from the USA, but also from Russia, China, India, and the United Arab Emirates. How did, how did they manage it? For some, the whole idea is just simply bonkers, a colossal waste of money, while for others, it's the future of humanity. Okay, let's look at the arguments. First of all, what about those who say, yes, yes, we should colonize Mars? Absolutely. Well, how can we not do something like this, given the kind of technology we now have and are developing? Our lives are constantly being transformed by technology and the curiosity that we have to do even more. Curiosity is a blessing. It nourishes us. And this is just one more example. There is also an obvious uh, economic interest in finding and exploiting the mineral resources of Mars. We might find some valuable stuff there that we could use somehow. <laughs> uh, the settlement of Mars and other planets could decrease the likelihood of human extinction, at least delay it for quite a long time. Of course, this is the ultimate purpose of Mars colonization. The richest man in the world, Elon Musk, is heavily involved. He plans a manned mission in one of his rockets in the next few years. Incredible. Here's what he says on his website. At an average distance of 140 million miles, Mars is one of Earth's closest habitable neighbors. It is about half again as far from the sun as Earth is, so it is still has decent sunlight. It's a little cold, but we can warm it up. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen and argon and a few other trace elements, which means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. Gravity on Mars is about 38% of that of Earth, so you would be able to lift heavy things more easily, bound around. Furthermore, the day is remarkably close to that of Earth. So, he says it's available for colonization. You have to listen to a chap that's accomplished as much as he has. The ultimate feasibility of colonization is confirmed by officialdom. Uh, commitments to researching permanent settlement have been made by public space agencies like NASA, the European Space Agency, uh, the Russian one, the Chinese one, private organizations like SpaceX, Elon Musk's company. There's a lot going on. So there's tremendous impetus behind this, and that in and of itself means not only that it's likely to happen, that, that, but that it must be a pretty good idea. <laughs> okay, uh, what about those who say, no, we shouldn't, we should not be trying to colonize Mars? Bad idea. First of all, we don't have the, the right to contaminate another planet. And space travelers, you'll recall, returning to Earth have been quarantined in their spacecraft for a while to prevent any such contamination of Earth. Well, it must be the same thing for Mars. There must be enormous potential for causing this kind of harm. Uh, Geoengineering Earth, which is becoming a new idea, to extend the life of time that Earth will be inhabitable is a lot more sensible and more feasible and less costly. So that's, that's a good alternative to solving our habitability problems here on Earth. And much of the pressure behind Mars exploration and proposals for colonization is basically narcissistic national pride, like, like flag airlines. If the Americans can do it, so can we. Well, that sort of thing prevents uh, sensible decision making, really, when you get right down to it. And it's likely that it won't even be possible. Uh, obstacles are considerable. A radiation exposure during a trip there and on its surface, uh, something, by the way, which a uh, great risk to the astronauts who went to the moon, toxic soil, low gravity, 
uh, the uh, low uh, gravity, uh, lack of water, cold temperatures. There's a lot of difficulty to overcome that collect- collectively make it a virtual impossibility. So what's my take on all this? Uh, simple. It's a waste of money. Um, any such gargantuan initiative must be subject to rigorous cost-benefit analysis, and the colonization of Mars just doesn't cut it. Um, even if the original and uh, initial colonization efforts uh, were successful, and even self-sustaining, how could we possibly imagine transporting hundreds of millions or even billions of people there to escape the planet that we've ruined? Uh, the sheer cost of that transport would dwarf the colossal expenditures which had been undertaken in all the preparatory phases. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I hope that doesn't uh, uh, offend a lot of people, but I think most of you will probably agree, agree with me. And if it does, please give me a like, a subscribe, comment, notify, and all that sort of thing. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.